the general linear model. It's so breathtaking, I could cry, and I just might. So we're talking about the general linear model today, but first, what is a model? No, not that model. That's my smoking hot wife, by the way. A model is just a simplification of reality. It retains the essential elements while ignoring the non-essential elements. So like a model airplane, it looks like a real airplane, but it's smaller and it doesn't fly. So in that situation, it is retaining the essential elements, the shape of the plane, but ignoring the non-essentials, like the fact that planes can fly. <laughs> yeah, who needs to fly? Totally non-essential. So what is the general linear model then? In its simplest form, it is... Outcome is equal to intercept plus slope times the predictor plus E. And so just like a model airplane, it retains the essential elements, in this case, intercept plus slope times predictor, and then it ignores the others. In this case, that's the E at the end. But the awesome and amazing and totally awesome thing about the general linear model is it is infinitely expandable. We might, for example, have outcome is equal to intercept plus slope one times predictor one plus slope two times predictor two, plus slope three times predictor one squared, plus slope four times predictor two cubed, plus E. Or if we wanted to simplify things and stuff, we would say that outcome is equal to estimates times predictors plus E. Or mathematically, if you guys are like super excited about math. Nope, I'm not. We would say Y is equal to beta times X plus E. That's in matrix form, by the way. And that's just to satisfy the pedantic. So let's look at an example of a general linear model. We have GPA is equal to 3.23 plus 0.12 times IQ plus negative 0 0.006 times TV plus E. So what this is saying is that one's GPA is made up of an intercept, 3.23, plus 0.12 times IQ. So every point you raise in your IQ, we could expect your GPA to go up by 0.12, and then negative 0 0.006 times TV, which means every hour you watch TV, we predict that your GPA will drop by 0 0.006 points. Well, I knew TV was bad for me. In reality though, GPA is comprised of lots of things. It's not just TV and IQ. Conscientiousness, how much you party probably, how much your parents incentivize you for good grades. There's lots of things. So the general linear model is going to retain those essential things and then ignore the non-essential things. But really, this is kind of a misnomer. What is essential and what is not essential? I don't know. It depends on the model, I guess. What we are doing with our model is explicitly identifying the themes that we consider essential and then relegating everything else to the non-essentials. Now, because all models ignore non-essential details, guess what? In the words of George Box, all models are wrong. But some models are actually useful, even if they're wrong. Or in other words, don't take a statistical model too literally. For example, if we have GPA is equal to 3.13 plus 0 0.006 times IQ plus negative 0.4 times TV plus E. I know, we changed the equation. What's up with that? Do we really think that people implicitly say, All right, well, I watched one hour of TV today, so now I need to drop my IQ by 0 0.006 points. Heck no! So we don't really believe these statistical models, but they often provide good descriptions of what might actually be going on. And that description is either useful or it's not. And what do we mean by useful? Models are useful if they could predict things and or if they can explain things. By the way, remember that, because that's gonna come up again. Well, hot dang, my GPA went down. Maybe it's because I watch too much TV. Or maybe, okay, so that guy watches two hours of TV a day. I think his... GPA is probably gonna be about 2.8. Maybe we should offer to help that poor soul. All right, all right, I think I get it. So, so what makes a good statistical model? Glad you asked. Well, for a statistical model to be useful, it has to actually fit the data. Meaning that if the model predicts your score will be a 4.0, it had better be pretty close to a 4.0. But fit is a necessary but not sufficient condition for good statistical models. And this is where statistics works best, is in assessing fit. Technical side note, statistical models actually suck at assessing fit, but they are very good at telling you which of two models fits better. 
a topic we will address more fully when we talk about model comparisons. So what else makes good statistical models? We don't have time to talk about it, but see the links in the description. Including one of my publications, y'all. What? Yeah, occasionally I do that. So how do we assist fit statistically? Glad you asked. I actually didn't ask. I'm gonna pretend you didn't say that. The way that we assess fit is actually what I've been teaching you this entire time. And you didn't even know it. What we have been doing this entire course is actually building statistical models, or at least preparing to build statistical models. And all along the way, we've been assessing the fit of the models. We've been doing that visually with bivariate graphics. This model fits. This model doesn't fit. This model kind of fits. This model doesn't fit, but because our model kind of sucks. But in addition to doing it visually, we've also been doing it with numbers or estimates as we've called them. This model fits. This model doesn't fit. And all along the way, we've been making sure that the fit actually makes sense. We've been looking at diagnostics and assumptions, and we've been looking at univariate plots for missing data and redundant labels and switcheroo groupies and that sort of thing. switch a groupies? Really? Get it together, Fife. Just stay focused, teach the lesson, then you can have a donut. <sighs> right back at it. And if the model seems to fit, then we've been interpreting things, like the slope how much y changes for every one point change in x, and how different are those who go to therapy relative to those who do not go to therapy. We've been assessing fit this whole time and you didn't even know it. I totally just waxed on and waxed off in your brains and stuff. So now my young statistical padawans, you are armed with a powerful tool, one that is easily abused. Don't join the dark side, please. And see my videos on p-hacking and ethics linked in the description. This tool can be used to explain the unexplainable, to predict the unpredictable, and to unlock the shocking secrets buried inside your data that the government doesn't want you to know about. You are a f***ing Jedi! And it all comes down to this. Outcome equals intercept plus slope times predictor plus E. That is your lightsaber. You will subscribe, like, and comment, and share. Did it work? The general linear model is your tool. And why does this matter? Because it's going to be very different from any other statistics class out there. They're gonna teach you about t-tests, ANOVAs, regressions, factorial ANOVAs, multiple regression, and COVA. Blah, blah, friggin' blah. But you know what? It's all the general linear model, folks. Y is equal to B0 plus E. That's a one sample t-test, by the way. Y is equal to B0 plus B1 times group plus E. That's an independent t-test. Time one minus time two is equal to B0 plus E. All it is is a related T. Y is equal to B0 plus B1 times group one plus B2 times group two. That's an ANOVA. Y is equal to B0 plus B1 times X plus B2 times group. And COVA. Y is equal to B0 plus B1X plus B2Z plus B3XZ. That's multiple regression. Now you don't have to memorize this now. We're gonna go more in depth into all these a little bit later. In the traditional stats class, they're gonna make you memorize this convoluted, complicated decision tree. How many predictors do you have? Is it one? Is your IV numeric? If yes, then regression. If no, then we gotta ask, is it two or more groups? If yes, then ANOVA. If no, then are the groups independent? If yes, it's an independent t-test. If no, then it's a related t-test. Are you kidding me? Really? So you tell me, what's easier? This? I would call it sophisticated. Or this, outcome is equal to intercept plus slope times predictors plus E. Ah, rest my case. Mic drop. Then with these super complicated procedures, a person sits in front of a computer and says, Oh, hmm, well, let's see. Is this an ANOVA? Or is it a t-test? Oh, what's the difference again? Oh, I don't remember. Or maybe it's regression. Whatever, I'm just gonna go have a taco. Versus, hmm, let's see. Is this a, um, crap? There's so few choices, I don't know what to do. I guess I'll choose an outcome and I'll choose my predictors. So hard. It's all the same thing. It's all the general linear model. And the only thing that really changes is how we visualize things. But even that's really the same thing. And the other thing that changes is instead of looking at slopes and intercepts, we might be looking at means and mean differences. But a mean is really an intercept and a mean difference is really a slope. So it's all the same thing. So instead of memorizing these useless decision trees, memorize this. What is your outcome? What are your predictors? Or if you are in R, here's your outcome. 
Here are your predictors. That's it, guys. That's so easy, it shouldn't be called statistics. It should be called simplistics. And by the way, let me just rant for a minute. Do you know how many times I've submitted a paper to a journal and one of the editors says, Oh, you shouldn't be doing a general linear model here. This is obviously a situation for a t-test. Yeah, you know what, moron? It's the same freaking thing. Don't try to tell me what to do, because I know what I'm doing. You can suck it, reviewer. Over the next few videos, I'm gonna show you how to use the general linear model. And over the course of these videos, you will find that these useless distinctions, ANOVA, regression, t-test, multiple regression, ANCOVA, overcomplicate things and they are entirely unnecessary. And you actually already know how to do them because that's what I've been teaching you this entire time. I'm just helping you put the pieces together. For the next few videos, we're gonna use the following strategies. One, we're gonna visualize the univariate distributions, either bar charts or histograms. Two, we will visualize the relationships of interest using Flexplot. Three, for the more advanced students, we are going to visualize the diagnostics and assess whether our assumptions have been met. And four, we're gonna compute our estimates of interest. And in a few short weeks, you will become a data Jedi. So with that, let's review our learning objectives. Number one, understand what a model is. A model is just a simplification of reality that ignores the non-essential elements and retains the essential elements. Understand the structure of the general linear model. Outcome is equal to intercept plus slope times predictor plus E. But you can add as many predictors as you want in there. You could add interaction terms. You could add polynomial terms. We'll talk about what that means later. Number three, understand what useful means in relation to general linear models. That just means, can it predict something and or can it explain something? Number four, know how we assess fit with general linear models. Again, we do that visually by looking at the plots and we do that numerically by looking at the estimates, assuming our diagnostics check out. And then finally, understand why the GLM is important because it is the mother of all statistics. So with that, peace out.